Hi, I'm Sam Peterson, author of two books, Trunky Transgender Junkie and Sugar, A Memoir of Craving. I'm an old gay trans man with bad teeth and I love knives. I'm not here to rate them or tell you about the newest, the fastest, the bestest, the cup-powest. I'm here to queerly share my queer love of knives with you. Ah, spring! I'm so excited. I managed to snag a Jake Hoback knife for half of what it costs. Now, uh, Jake Hoback knives, I suspect, were very expensive at one point. They still are, but they probably were, I don't know, desirable. I don't know if they're desirable anymore, but they're still expensive. And I, I this particular blade was retails for 425 bucks which puts it into a realm well beyond what i can afford but since it was relatively cheap and hoback knives uh at least one time were probably popular expensive knives i picked this one up I also got a silly civivi knife that if you squint <laughs> kind of resembles the hoback uh, but, uh, which, by the way, is named The One Sam. Much like a child, I am a sucker for things with my name on them. So that got my attention. It wasn't until I noticed a reference to a psalm on Hoback's site that I realized Jake Hoback is talking about One Samuel in the Old Testament. I don't like mixing my knives with my spirituality, and I don't approve of others doing so either. I certainly appreciate wanting to honor one's higher self or higher power, for getting uh, one with this, gifting one with a special talent for, oh, say, knife design. But do that shit on your own time, man. I really dislike it. I do. Since I brought it up, here's my thing. I think spirituality is deeply personal. I would never impose my beliefs on somebody else. My relationship with whatever is going on in the universe and in here is nobody's business but mine. I don't know why I had a little accent for that, but it's nobody else's business and nobody's interest. So stick that in your sanctimonious pipe, Jake Hoback. Anyway, this knife is vexing. The tolerances are super tight. Uh, it's well-built, obviously an expensive knife. Apparently it was built in China by Wii, and it feels like a Wii knife. It's kind of dense, kind of heavy, tight tolerances, good quality but not built for comfort, necessarily. It is occasionally painful to open and to close. This extended top flipper here, you see that? You see that? This extended top flipper, um, when it comes around the back, it can catch the flesh, my, my finger flesh. And uh, it's quite pinchy. What was that, baby? <clears throat> Jesus Christ, I don't know if you heard that noise, but I thought my cat was dying. Apparently, my cat just brought me a little present, a little toy, which is adorable. Whew. Anyway, I find this knife to be kind of pinchy and hard. The thing is, is I think it's a gorgeous knife. I know, I know, it looks tactical, but my brain doesn't immediately sort things into stab a person, won't stab a person. I just don't think like that. So when I am confronted with a pointy, sleek, sexy blade such as this, I think, ooh, pointy, sleek, sexy blade. Interesting EDC choice. It definitely has enough belly to cut. Am I right? Am I right? It's not just a poker. That's what he said. I find it to be quite sexy and lovely to behold. It's a gorgeous blade shape. 
I just can't get over the pinchy thing. I can't. Is that some Old Testament thing or something? Pinch thyself so thy God will know thee? I want to carry this knife so bad. It's so cool. But it is so uncomfortable. Is it because I'm trans? I was looking at something, looking for something to measure it by, to compare it to, and I inadvertently ran across this amazing Civivi knife, the Star, Star Flare, or as I like to call it, the Star Fart. The Star Fart um, is bigger, though. Uh, its weight is comparable, but it is bigger. Um, however, once you open it, you can see that the length is very close to the length of the ISAM. That's what I'm going to call it. Not the one SAM, the ISAM. Uh, that having been said, it's totally up to Civivi snuff. It's well built. It fires right out. The button is sublime. If this is a blade that appeals to you aesthetically, I would say go for it. It's a really good knife. It just looks like a prop from the set of Flash Gordon from the 80s. You remember that movie? Uh, it looks like, I don't know, it's silly to me. If I had the money to throw away on stuff, I would totally keep it. But I just had to buy a bunch of camping shit so my bed doesn't get wet when I go camping. It's not what you're thinking. It's for when it rains, people. Not because of me. Ugh. And finally, I got a used Kaiser Mini Towser in titanium frag and 154 cm, and I love it. This is a great knife. It's a White Mountain. I almost said Whitney Houston. It's a Whitney Houston exclusive. Bobby! It's 105 without any discount, but you can usually find a 10%er out there somewhere uh, in knife, knife enthusiast land, so go get you a discount. I can't help but carry, compare it to the iSAM. It's so comfy. Most of Kaiser's knives are so comfortable. I've only had one real disappointment in that, uh, in that regard, and that was my feist. Painful to flip. Kaiser makes knives for the eyes and the hands, and this one is just perfect for me. Just perfect. I think the, um, the full-size Towser was just a little much for my dainty uh, man hands, but this Mini is just perfect. I'm so glad they came out with a Mini because I love this blade shape. Anyway, I love you too. I love you. And I will see you next week. Have a great one. Bye. Um, where am I?